Hello and welcome to this channel. This is a completely different setup now. Usually whenever I have been, made videos for this channel, I have been filming in the middle of the night in the past. Today I'm also filming in the middle of the night, but instead of filming in front of my desk, I'm filming on my bed. My books are behind me. My books are in front of me. I have a lot of books. I also have beer and a wine glass, so it's a very classy time right now. Today we are going to be going over the costume design for the new Netflix show, Bridgerton. Br Bridgerton. That show that everyone has been talking about. Everyone has a lot of opinions. I've been looking into that show. I've watched that show. I marathoned it last night. Didn't sleep. I have mixed opinions. I mean, I don't hate that I watched the show. I don't hate the show. I actually think that there are a really like good set of positives within the show. But would I watch it again? No. Do I think it's an interesting show? Yes. Do I think it's a quarantine-worthy show? Yes. Do I like the costumes? Yes. And that's what we're going to get into today. So the person who designed the costumes is Ellen Miranick. I can't pronounce her last name. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I want to start off this video by referencing the last question in an interview that was done with the slate.com or slate.com. And here's this question here. Have you seen any of the fashion historian reactions to the costumes? And um, she basically says that uh, the whole show was not meant to be historically accurate when it came to the costumes, at least. And you kind of see that throughout um, the aesthetics of the show I mean it's obviously very pretty um the costumes like match the characters and so on and so forth we're going to get into more of that throughout this video but what I really want to emphasize is the fact that this this TV show was not meant to be historically accurate when it came to the costumes. She literally says that she serves as the director and the creative vision, and that's it. Um, that being 100% historically accurate was not on their agenda. A big part of the Regency era, um, early 1800s, wear bonnets, and it's kind of curious, and it's a very um, emblematic thing, I think, um, that they didn't include bonnets. And I couldn't really find a straight up answer as to why they didn't include bonnets. And I feel like a lot of the fashion historians that I watch on YouTube will be like, the bonnets, where are the bonnets? Which is fair, because I feel like if you are somebody who is very heavily invested in the Regency era, you see a Regency TV show and you're like, where are the bonnets? The bonnets were a huge part of that time period and you don't see any bonnets or you see like a little hat, but you don't see any bonnets, I feel like I would feel like a little bit slighted. But as somebody who is like not super invested in things like accuracy, I'm not like, I'm invested, but I'm not like super entrenched. I'm okay with them not having bonnets, but I kind of feel like it would have been nice to see a few bonnets because there are ways to make a bonnet without making the whole thing look dated. And from what I can gather, they did not want to include Bonnets and figure swamping sacks. And instead, every character is dripping in jewels, feathers, and finery, hell bent on outshining one another. That sounds to me like it's pretty historically like synonymous with how it actually might have been, but you can still put bonnets on the characters. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I say I don't care about the bonnets, but I kind of I kind of wish that they had bonnets anyway. Here's a photo of some of the cast members, and as you can see, like, I mean, no one's wearing bonnets, and I think they tried to make up for that by simply having, like, these floral headpieces. Like, here's um these, like, flower, like, these, not flowery, but, like, feather headpieces that debutantes wear, wear when they're coming out, which is a scene that happens in the first episode of the TV show. Um... But they also try to compensate for the lack of bonnets by uh, the ornamental aspect. They just like, try to like put like little fascinators on their heads. They um, try to basically like have like these like clips and Swarovski crystals. And again, not a fashion historian personally, but um, I was kind of like when I was looking at the show, I was kind of like, huh. Where, like, why do they have Swarovski crystals? Were Swarovski crystals even a thing in the Regency period? I don't, I don't think so. 
Oh yeah, this is actually something I wanted to get into, the difference between uh, the Featheringtons and the Bridgertons. So the Featheringtons and the Bridgertons are the two main families that are pictured in this series. So the Featheringtons apparently, from the research I have done, come from new money. And it becomes blatantly obvious as you watch the series, when you kind of have that thought process in your head, that uh, they are in fact new money. They're supposed to be garish, a little bit more vulgar. And vulgar is a very strong word, but when you actually study um, the 1800s, when you look into that time period, you realize that wearing neons and wearing a lot of embellishments and being a little bit classless and, um, oh, I don't know, falling down in front of the queen, that would have been vulgar. So their style reflects this. In the books, apparently, their style was described as ugly. And the costume designer, when she was creating these uh, dresses, she didn't actually describe the outfits that the Featheringtons wore as being ugly. In fact, she actually said that she liked them. She said that they were like icing on a cake, basically. And this is Mrs. Featherington, and you actually do get a lot of symbolism in this series that I feel like you would become more attuned to if you actually read the books. I haven't read the books. Neither has a costume designer. May I say that? I feel like you should read the source material if you're designing anything for a series. Not just the script, the source material. But yeah, I'm becoming very crabby in this video. I mean, like, I don't mean to be this crabby. I don't want to tell people how to do their jobs, but it's kind of weird that the costume designer like outright said that she just didn't read the source material. There is a symbolism in terms of insects in the series. And let me explain. So the butterflies are supposed to be the Featheringtons and the bees, the bumblebees, are supposed to be the Bridgertons. Now, you see a lot of bees and a lot of butterflies in this series, and specifically when it comes to Mrs. Featherington's um, hat, you see that she's wearing a butterfly. Uh, when you look at her outfits, they are very bright, they're very colorful, they're very uh, fancy, but not in the classy way that the Bridgertons outfit themselves. Um, these are the uh, Featherington daughters, and you can see that they're like dressed, um, well, this is actually like a little bit more conservative compared to what they usually wear. They usually wear a lot of like colors, and they're quite flashy, uh, but this is when they were like coming out, right? So this is like they're coming out, they're supposed to be wearing white when they're presented to the queen um, at the beginning of the season. And here you actually see um, an idea of like what they wear on a day-to-day -day basis. You have like these puffed sleeves, very Regency appropriate. Um, and then you have the curly hair. I actually did like the curly hair. Um, it's nice that they included that because as far as I can remember from the research I've done, and I'm not a Regency expert, but from the research I've done, curly hair was a big thing back then. And it's nice that they included that. But it's interesting that the Featheringtons had more curly hair than the Bridgertons. Interesting. But um, if you look at the outfits worn by the Featheringtons, it's like very citrusy. And I believe the name of this character is Penelope Featherington, but you can see that she like um, has like a lot of yellow in her costume and it is actually referenced several times in the series how she doesn't like wearing the color yellow, but her mother, Mrs. Featherington, uh, wants her to wear yellow because she thinks it's the best thing. This is a look into um, one of the preliminary sketches for Daphne Bridgerton. And you can definitely see that there is a stark difference. Daphne actually does end up wearing a lot of blue. There's a lot of significance to that color, which I will get into in a moment. But um, I'm trying to find like another picture of Daphne Bridgerton so I can like show you the difference between her and the Featheringtons. And I'm focusing more on Daphne because I mean like they literally made I think 7,500 costumes for this series and I cannot focus on each and every single character. It would just be too much. But if you look at, um, for example, what Daphne Bridgerton is wearing, this is like a blue dress. It's kind of simple. It's like a ball gown. Um, and you look at what the Featheringtons wear. I mean, it's like pretty. I think it's pretty, but it's definitely, it's a lot, especially when you consider that the fashions during this period were like very light and pastels. The Bridgertons definitely appear to have this down. This is a family portrait, if you will. And you can see that they're all wearing light 
pastels and when you look at the Featheringtons, like, I mean, look at this pattern. I mean, it's beautiful. I love it, but it's like a lot, you know, uh, but that's like their aesthetic. That's what they're wearing. It's like, it's their um, new money, if you will, and that is pretty much encapsulated in their style. Oh yeah, here's a photo of one of the uh, Featheringtons falling. I mean, come on. You would never do that. That would, no, that's a big no-no. Oh yeah, this is Daphne and Eloise, again, two of the Bridgertons. Daphne wears a lot of blue in this series, especially in the beginning part. She wears a lot of blue and white. But as she matures, as she marries, she ends up wearing like a lot of deeper tones. And you kind of see that progression throughout the series. And I definitely saw that as I was like kind of like re-skimming the series, doing research for this video. She wears a lot of blue and it's supposed to like symbolize innocence, loyalty, kindness, all these positive traits are associated with Daphne. And that's her sister Eloise and Eloise is considered to be like the more like vibrant, like the more feminist character in Regency England. She's like very like, I am not going to marry. I want to be in a strong independent woman. Honestly, good luck. Good luck in 1814, I think. Good luck. Ellen Muronick was asked um, whether or not she preferred the Bridgertons or the Featheringtons in terms of costume design, and she actually said that she liked both for different reasons. And I definitely see that. I feel like it's like a completely different experience designing something that's like a little bit more refined, like, for example, Daphne's ball gowns which are gorgeous by the way and going in and designing like something for the featheringtons which is like um a lot like this is insane i mean um yeah she described it as a big ice cream sundae with all the toppings when it came to designing the show's costumes and i feel like she was very much referencing the Fre featheringtons but i mean come on let me look look at all these beautiful details like this is kind of insane. And I also want to pull up like another image. Uh, by the way, I'll be linking all of these websites down below. I just like looked at a, whole, at a whole bunch of different websites to really get the feel of all this costume design. And like this is a behind the scenes look and look at how many beautiful feathers and embellishments are present. Like their um, warehouse was insane. Like this is just a look into like what they had in there. Like, this is just all organized and this is these are costumes for the extras the main characters and actually like another big thing um let me pull up this photo right here so you can kind of see like how they were like forming like all the garments they actually had a shortage of like different fabrics they couldn't like have like a big variation of fabrics so what they did is that they like layer different fabrics to kind of create different effects for the extras and like the principal characters so they could get like different costumes out of the same looking fabrics and I really like that because that ended up creating like this beautiful just a uh, display on the screen that I really enjoy this show is very visually appealing and you definitely see that um and let me try and pull up some more photos of um Daphne being fitted um this uh, Daphne is played by Phoebe Denever. I'm so sorry. Whenever I can pronounce someone's last name, like, freely, I will let you know. Um, but, like, she, here she's getting fitted um, for this, uh, one of her, the costumes that she wears, I believe, in the first episode. But yeah, she wears a ton of blue, so honestly, you never know. Oh yeah, and this is Queen Charlotte. I wanted to show this, because um, Queen Charlotte was actually a real person. She was married to George the Third. He, I think he was the guy that, like, lost um, the 13 colonies. So, like, that's what he's known for. And also an interesting tidbit is apparently Queen Charlotte had, like, um, African descent, which is really insane. I kind of looked into it, and they haven't, like, I don't think that there has been, like, a lot of research going into it. Um, apparently the palace, the palace in uh, Great Britain hasn't, like, denied it. They're saying that, like, yeah, she had African descent, but um, essentially she would have been, like, what we, I guess we can call mulatto, which is you have, like, the features of somebody who is half like or not half you have the features of someone who looks like they came from African descent but you also like are mostly white and like if you look at portraits of her um 
she's like kind of powdered so she looks like lighter skinned in the way that was fashionable back then but um i guess like you look at um something like um, Bridgerton and you don't necessarily expect that the person that this character is inspired by was actually a descendant from African ancestors but this is actually the truth like she probably very much was of African descent but it definitely wasn't something that would have been talked about to the extent that they did in the show but um, then again I do think it's kind of it's a refreshing thing to see Chandra Rhimes uh, come up with a show that is much more diverse than anything I've personally ever seen with period dramas. Um, it doesn't matter if it's realistic or not, and I feel like there's a lot of argument about that. Um, I just enjoy seeing something that is a little bit more reflective of the way we see the world today, albeit in a different setting, uh, rather than just seeing like an all-white cast play in a period setting. It's nice to see some um, literal like variation in terms of characters. And you see Asian people, you see Indian people, you see uh, Black people. Like It's nice seeing that and white. Um, yeah, there are a lot of ways we can um, just be a little bit more diverse in Hollywood and it's nice seeing us taking like a baby step in the right direction. So anyway, here you have Queen Charlotte with her uh, ladies in waiting, presumably. They're never really like mentioned as ladies in waiting, but um, I will assume that they're ladies in waitings and ladies in waiting. <laughs> And they have like all these Pomeranians and if you look at their costumes, they're very much um, 18th century and the show takes place in the 19th century and people are like, okay, well, it's kind of like interesting that she's like 18th century when the show takes place in the 19th century and I did see like a little bit of conversation about that online. Well, in reality, apparently, um, according to Ellen Miranek, uh, Queen Charlotte kind of like stayed to her silhouette. She didn't necessarily change her appearance with the changing fashions um, into the 19th century. So she essentially would have been wearing what um, the 18th century version of her would have been wearing. So that's why she looks like she is like from the 1700s when literally the show is set in the early 1800s. Now I looked for references to back this up, but I didn't find any. It's actually kind of hard to find like dated uh, paintings of Queen Charlotte, which I don't know why it would be, but I couldn't really find like any portraits of her from like the 1800s to verify this. But I assume that the show would have done their due diligence to research this, so I'm assuming that uh, that is correct. So I'm assuming that this is right. But uh, you definitely see like a lot of like really like beautiful frills, and it's very like Marie Antoinette style. Um, which is something I saw referenced a lot. Something that they did is that for every single outfit, they actually had like a new wig for Queen Charlotte to wear. So you see her like display like a very diverse array of hairstyles. But yeah, I did want to mention that if you're wondering why she looks like she's from the 1700s when the show set in the 1800s, that's the reason according to my research. Um, also, I just want to like go back and like look at these beautiful photos from like the costume warehouse if you will I think that they're stunning um here you see like so outfits or some of the outfits that were worn by Eloise and Penelope again that difference between the Featheringtons and the Bridgertons it's very visible even in the colors um and yeah oh yeah here are the headpieces now I think that these are quite beautiful. I don't think how, I don't know how accurate these are to the Regency era. Um, I feel like they wouldn't have worn bonnets in the evening, most definitely not, so maybe this would have been accurate. I don't know. If you are a little bit more of an expert than me, let me know. But oh my gosh, I want to talk about this. Okay, so there isn't like really much that's being said about the costumes that were worn by the men. And personally, usually I'm not necessarily interested in men's fashion, especially when it comes to period stuff. Well, probably more period stuff than anything else. But when I was looking at this show, all... Like, the stu the things that the men were wearing, like, oh my gosh, how stunning. Like Simon, oh my gosh. Like, I mean, first of all, like, he's, like, just chef's kiss, gorgeous. But, like, I mean, just look at what he's wearing. Like, the way it's tailored, the way it's fitted, 
the way his collar is like turned up like that. But just like look at um, the way they're dressed. Like look at that velvet. Um, just look at that. It's just, it's just insane. I love it. I think it's amazing. I love the collars. I love how they seem to have been inspired by the colors of insects to create these. Um, so are those, I'm actually wondering, are those hat pins? Or are those pins for the collars? I think those are buckles. See, they don't really say that like in the caption. Um, they just say like inside the Bridgerton costume department. But it's clear that they were inspired by insects, which is kind of interesting. I don't really see them talk about that that much. Talk about that that much. But I mean, like I feel like if I could like choose the wardrobe of like any group of characters in this. Um, period period uh, drama, I would definitely choose what the guys were wearing simply because I feel like it's just timeless. Like, I wouldn't necessarily want to wear what the girls were wearing. I mean, I like looking at it, but I wouldn't want to wear it. What I'd want to wear is what the guys were wearing because, I mean, like, look at, like, the tailoring. Look at how beautiful this all looks. I mean, come on. Like, you could... I mean, if you were, like, ballsy enough, you could definitely pull this off, like, just walking down the street and like wearing jeans or something like you could definitely do it like I'm looking for someone to do that oh yeah here's an example of um what they decided to do instead of wearing bonnets like here you have like honestly fascinators that were pretty similar to what you saw like at the royal weddings uh before uh covid but yeah I mean like it's kind of like it's very modern so Again, obviously, they were not trying to be historically accurate. It's definitely obvious when you look at the fact that these pretty much look very modern. I mean, this looks like a Philip Treacy studio in um, 2019. Not 2020, because that's when COVID happened. Oh, yeah, here we have, like, these little jackets. That looks so cool. What does it say? Uh, puff sleeve. I don't see what it says. Oh yeah, there's telling it says like reset sleeves and things like that. <gasps> That's so cool. Oh my gosh, I love this. I'm like completely like going nerdy for all of this. And these are, are some of the fabrics. Um, I need to like pull up some more images that I saved like of the fabrics in particular. Yeah, like this is insane. I love this. I'm like obsessed with all of this oh yeah so like they actually employed a few embroiderers on staff a few embroiderers and a corset maker for the corset obviously okay let me just say this like let me just say this something that i will definitely be upset about is if i'm looking at a period drama and they're not wearing a corset a corset is not a sign of anti-feminism it's simply not it's something that you literally wore it's the same kind of thing as a bra, okay? Would you go around in the fancy gown with no bra? If you had more than an A, an a or B cup. And if your boobs weren't as perky as you wanted them to be. Would you go around wearing no bra? I wouldn't. Not necessarily. It's just physically uncomfortable for me. So again, let's not not wear corsets in period dramas. I'm talking to... Mo I'm talking mostly about Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson when they decided to not wear a corset as a feminist thing. Like, just, no, please, like, let's just not confuse feminism with not wearing, with wearing or not wearing a corset. Like, let's just not do that. That's just, no, 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 no. So, yes, I did enjoy the corset wearing in this series. I thought it was well, uh, it was well, it was well needed. C come on, like, you cannot not wear corsets. This is one of the mood boards. Um, I will pull up a few that I found um, online of the mood boards that they used. When they were creating the mood boards, they used a mix of actual like Regency fashion plates um, and like obviously like some more like obscure like flowers and things. But then they also used like runway photos from like actual recent runway collections. They were also inspired by Christian Dior's new look. So like all these elements kind of came together to form like this show. Oh my gosh, like look at, okay, look at Simon's outfit in this photo. I mean, like look at that collar, like come on, like, mm, I love, I love the men's clothing. Okay, oh yeah, here I wanted to sort of like chronicle the like um, evolution of Daphne, if you will. Like, um, let, where do we start? Okay, yeah. So, like, you see, like, her, like, start off, like, just wearing blues. 
blues, 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 dark blue. This is when things get spicy. Um, dark, medium blue, <laughs> lavender. She's like married at this point, I think. Um, so yeah, like you definitely see a difference. And oh yeah, I loved the tailoring on this. This is kind of cool. I thought that was interesting. And yeah, this is at the end, like when she's wearing um, classy pastels, but like medium in tone. Like it's not the lighter colors that she was wearing before. And these are like some photos I pulled from um, Ellen's Instagram, uh, where she was showing like the different, uh, the processes of creating these things. Um, you can kind of see like um, these like dresses and you can definitely see the layering of the different materials like tool, I believe that was, tool and organza. Not very good at my materials when it comes to things like that. Oh yeah, that's really beautiful. Like, yeah, this is like one of the other photos I showed you before. Um, and then you have like, oh, that's beautiful. I can't, I can't remember who wore that. But yeah, isn't that beautiful? I love this. I love this. Oh yeah, and here you have like these like floral embellishments. They did a lot of floors. So I was actually like really inspired um, because I've been getting like back into photography. I'm gonna show more of that on this YouTube channel. But I was really inspired by like just how many flowers they use. So maybe I can create like a flower wall and do a photo shoot with it. That would be so much fun. But anyway, that's where I want to end this video right here. Um, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Um, overall, again, this TV series is very aesthetically pleasing, but is it like a, a must see if you're like a history nerd and you just want to get like accurate? No, it's not. I mean, like Chandra Rhimes, like she's just not somebody who's necessarily going to go look for historical accuracy. It's all about the drama, it's all about the sex, it's all about the sensuality, it's all about like the storyline and creating something that will resonate with modern audiences. And I believe that they, and I believe that they did just that in a way. Um, but yes, there are like some like plot holes that I noticed that were kind of like not as accurate as I would like, but like all in all, it was something that was really enjoyable to watch when I was watching it. Do I want to watch it again? No. Do I like the aesthetics of the costumes and the way it looked? Absolutely, yes. Um, I think it's like a it's like a fun quarantine type TV show to watch if you're looking for something new. And if there's a season two, I am really excited to watch it because I'm kind of like, I'm interested in seeing um, Sienna and Antony's like love story unfold. Hopefully there's one left <laughs> because if there isn't, oh boy, that's that's painful. But um, anyway, thank you for watching till the end of this video. If you stayed this long, I hope you enjoyed. And I, again, will be linking all my resources down below naturally. And I will see you next time. Bye.